um, apparently Beauty and the Beast features Disney's first openly gay character. You heard this? Yeah. I don't think so. Ursula from Little Momo was clearly a great big dyke, wasn't she? <laughs> Flick and lick under the sea, didn't she? <laughs> Dirty <Dude>, bitch. <laughs> but listen, I went to see Beauty and the Beast, and I'm not sure what kind of message we're sending to our kids with this kind of film. I mean, a young girl gets taken away from her family, held captive against her will for many years, then she falls in love with the man who kidnapped her. They get married, everyone is overjoyed about this, and they live happily ever after. Now, I'm not being funny, but do you think we would all have that same reaction? If Madeleine McCann... <laughs> if Madeleine McCann made her comeback... <laughs> Yes! <laughs> well, frankly, if you want your kids to watch a story with a moral, you might as well get them to watch a Saw film rather than Beauty and the Buggery Bastard Beast. I don't know. <laughs> so listen, I took the wife to see a Whitney Houston tribute act last week. <laughs> I'm using the word wife quite loosely. <laughs> I'd ever seen. She didn't look like her, she didn't sound like her. I certainly don't remember Whitney Houston having a camel toe. <laughs> or a cleft palate. It was called, I can't believe it's not Whitney Houston. We only went because our cactus died on the same day as Whitney, so we went in respect. So Brexit only officially happened yesterday, but things are already changing, aren't they? They're changing. I was in Café Rouge today. As my mum likes to call it, Café Rouge. <laughs> I was in Café Rouge. I said to the Polish waitress, can I have some Dijon mustard, please? She went, not anymore, you can't. No. <laughs> I don't like Theresa May, everybody. How can we trust a woman with nostrils that big? <laughs> have you seen them? If you've not, let me tell you. I wouldn't want to share a gram of coke with that bitch. <laughs> Now listen, I don't come to Greenwich very often, but I came here today on the DLR and I passed the place. I don't know whether it's pronounced right, but it was called Mud Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, mud Shoot. How the hell would anyone call anywhere Mud Shoot? <laughs> it sounds like it belongs in Bangladesh rather than Zone 3. <laughs> and just as I suspected, the people getting off of Mud Shoot were just as ugly as the bass sounded. <laughs> This woman got off with her kid. She looked like she'd not only been beaten by the ugly stick, but fingered, raped, and tortured by it. <laughs> Mud shoot. <laughs> and I'm not saying the baby was ugly. But even the pram had shutters. <laughs> used to this. I've come all the way from West London. I've come from Chelsea, everybody. It's very posh in Chelsea. Even my local ketamine dealer wears chinos and a cravat. <laughs> <laughs> must be the only place in London you can ring for a delivery where the driver will turn up promptly on a penny farthing. <laughs> all the men, they're called Hugo and Bruce, and they all wear the same coloured chinos in the summer. You know that colour that can only be described as hearing aid beige. <laughs> One of my poor friends said to me the other day, she said, how do you afford to live in Chelsea? She's only jealous because she lives in Mudshoot. <laughs> she said, how do you afford to live in the Royal Borough? And I told her, I actually live in a council estate in Chelsea. It's still fucking washed though, it's Chelsea, everybody. We've still got kids drinking on the streets. It's just most of us are lactose intolerant. <laughs> Plus, we still watch Jeremy Kyle every day, it's just when we do it, we like to sit on a chaise long. <laughs> but I was watching Jeremy Kyle the other day, I don't know where he gets his people from. He was interviewing this man, he had no teeth. All his eyes were all googly and independent from the test of meth he'd been taking. They said he had one eye in you and one eye in your wallet. 
and then the title of the episode was I did not touch your mother, the smell on my fingers was because I'd been eating prawn cocktail skills. <laughs>